what we want to do in this video is to introduce ourselves to the concept of sequences. To do that, these are the things that we are going to do. So number one, we are going to define a sequence. Number two, we are going to differentiate a finite or finite sequence from an infinite sequence. Number three, we are going to find the next terms of a sequence given the first few terms. And number four, we are going to find the first few terms of a sequence given the rule. Now, without even knowing it unconsciously, probably, you have been observing and creating patterns ever since you were a very small child. You probably made repeating patterns with shapes such as the one that is presented now with triangles and circles. So let us try to find the pattern out. So we have here a triangle, a triangle, a circle, and then a square. After, after the square here, we are given again a triangle, a triangle, a circle, and then a square. So we have formed a pattern. What is what is the pattern that is being formed here? So the pattern is that we have two triangles, a circle, and a square. So if we want to find out what the next shape is going to be, so that's basically a triangle. So we just copy the triangle here, paste it there, and then that is the next term of our sequence given shapes. Now if you want the next shape again so again that's going to be another triangle if we want the next shape that's going to be oh sorry right there if you want the next the next shape that's going to be a circle and if we still want the next one we all know that that's going to be a square so that is the pattern. Now, if we want the next four terms again, then we just have to copy this because that is our pattern. Triangle, triangle, circle, square. So that's basically the, the pattern that we have formed with these shapes given to us. So let us now define what a sequence is. So a sequence is a succession of numbers which follows some fixed pattern. Each number is called a term. Subscripts are used to designate the number of a term. So for example, right here, we have here a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and then a sub n for a series of n terms. So what does or what do these um, inclusions in our sequence mean? So a sub 1 means the first term. First term. a sub 2 is our second term. And a sub 3 is our third term. What is a sub n? a sub n is our nth term and n is the number of terms sir what do you mean by nth term so basically this n right here we can plug any number to n and that is the the term so for example we plugged in um 7 here in n so that's going to be seventh term so that is the seventh term and the number of terms so if the last term is the seventh term then the number of terms is seven so let us now go to the types of sequences we have two types of sequences according to terms so we have the finite or finite sequence and the infinite sequence so what 
how do we differentiate one from the other? So a finite sequence or a finite sequence has a first term and a last term. So for example, we have here 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22. This is a finite sequence because it does have a first term here. The first term is 2 and it has a last term, 22. So this is a finite sequence or a finite sequence. We are also sure that this is a sequence because it follows a pattern. What is the pattern? So the pattern is, so 2, to get 6, what did we do? We added 4. From 6 to 10, we added 4. From 10 to 14, we added 4. And so on. So we are certain that this is a sequence. And also, this is a finite or finite sequence because it has a first term, which is 2, and a last term, which is 22. How about an infinite sequence? So an infinite sequence has a first term, but it does not have a last term. So in our example, we have here, we are also certain that this is a sequence because from the first term, it has a first term of 5. To get the next term, what did we do? We added 2. And then from the second term, we added 2. And we added 2. But it does not have a last term. How are we sure that it does not have a last term? Because unlike in unlike the first sequence, we are we have a, la a last term which is 22. But in our next sequence, all we have is something like this. Which we all know as quote unquote and so on. Which means that uh, it is infinitely um, extending to whatever pattern it suggests or the first few terms suggests. But this is called an ellipsis. So basically, the difference between a finite and a, a finite or finite and an infinite sequence is the ellipsis. Because the ellipsis or the quote unquote and so on indicates that the sequence extends infinitely. Unlike the finite sequence where it does have a last term. So let us have our examples. Example number one we have to find the next term of the sequence 19, 24, 29, 34. So what is asked for, from us? is the term succeeding 34. How do we find that out? So we have to generate the pattern from the first terms or the given terms. So we have here 19. That is our first term. The first term is 19. From our first term 19, how did we get the second term or a sub 2? So we added 5. From 24 to 29, what did we do? We also added 5. And from 29, how did we get 34? We also added 5. So that is the pattern that has been generated from the first terms that are given to us. Therefore, what is the next term? The next term is 39. Following the pattern, we should just add 5 to 34 to get the next term. Let's go to our second example. Find the next three terms of the sequence. 6, 12, 24, 48. Unlike in our first example where we were just asked to find the next term, this time around we were asked to find the next three terms. How are we going to do that? Same thing in the first example, we have to generate the pattern first. So what is the pattern here? So our first term is 6. This is a sub 1. How did we get 12 or a sub 2? We added 6. 
But if we add 6 to 12, we should be getting 18. But we did not get 18. What did we get? 24. The, the third term is 24, not 18. Therefore, this plus 6 is incorrect. So let us find another way to get 12 from 6. How will we get 12 from 6? Maybe we can multiply it by 2. So if we multiply 6 by 2, we get 12. And if we multiply 12 by 2, we get 24. And again, if we multiply 24 by 2, we get 48. So that is the pattern that we have generated. So to get the next term, we should multiply the previous term by 2. So we will now get or find the next three terms. So we have 48 times 2. That is 96. That is the next term. But we are asked for the next three terms. So we continue the pattern. 96 times 2, that's 192. And lastly, we have 192 times 2, that's 384. And these are the next three terms of this given sequence. Last example. So we have to find the first four terms of the given rule a sub n is equal to 3n minus 2. How are we going to do this? So we have a rule right here. This is sometimes referred to as the mathematical model or the general term. So these are the alternate names for the rule, quote unquote. So we can refer to this um, yellow highlighted equation as a mathematical model or the general term. So from this rule, we can find the terms of a particular sequence. In this particular example, we are asked to find the first four terms. How are we going to do that? So for a sub 1, a sub 1 is the first term. What should we do is to plug 1 in place of n in the rule. So we take the rule a sub n equals 3n, sorry, 3n minus 2. And instead of 2, we write 1. We plug 1 in place of n. So this is going to be a sub 1, the first term. Is equal to 3 times 1 minus 2. So that is 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2. So a sub 1 is equal to 1. So this is our first term. To find the second term, we just change n. To 2. So instead of 1, we are going to plug 2. So we have to take the rule a sub n equals 3n minus 2. And instead of n, we plug in 2. So we have 2. a sub 2 is equal to 3 times 2 minus 2. 3 times 2, that is 6 minus 2. So a sub 2 is equal to 4. How about the third term, a sub 3? So, 4 a sub 3, we take the rule a sub n equals 3n minus 2. And instead of n, we plug in 3. So, we have here a sub 3, which denotes the third term, is equal to 3 times 3 minus 2. So we have here a sub 3, sorry, we have here 3 times 3, 9 minus 2. a sub 3 is equal to 7. 
that is our third term. Since we are asked for the first four terms, we continue the process until a sub 4. So we take the rule a sub n equals 3n minus 2. And instead of n, we plug in 4. So a sub 4, which denotes the fourth term, is equal to 3 times 4 minus 2. We have here 3 times 4 is 12 minus 2 for our fourth term, which is 10. So what are the first four terms given the rule a sub n is equal to 3n minus 2? The first four terms are 1, 4, 7, and 10. Just to be sure, we have to try and generate a pattern to check if this is a sequence because if we followed a rule um, it suggests that there, there should be a sequence formed so from the first term one what do we do to get four we add three so from four to get seven we add three and from seven to get ten we also add three